Okay, to activate your pre-registration, there's just a couple of things that you'll need to do. And you actually have to physically uh, go in and activate it to open it up. Uh, essentially, you're turning it on and opening up for your uh, people to come and register. And so there's a couple ways to get there. If you're within your tournament and you're working in here under registration, a few ways. If I go to the pre-reg limits, click on pre-reg. This is that mapping page that you'll come to later to import your wrestlers. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and click here to log into my pre-registration. And it takes me to this wrestlers page. Um, no wrestlers there yet. Um, and that's what you'll see the first time when you open this up. Uh, but I'm just going to close that. Another way to get there and a very common way and a good way for you to get used to getting there is right from the search page. I found my event. This is the one. I click on pre-register and this is a good way to look only because this is how your um, customers will come. This is how your wrestlers will come to register. And you'll notice if you haven't activated it, there's a big message here telling them um, your email would probably be here because you opened it up. Of course, this is just a testing event. So it's just this no reply at track wrestling. Um, basically, all you need to do is log in as the admin. So again, this is where wrestlers will come to register once it's open, but I'm going to log in as an admin it'll take me right in. Uh, I'm logged in with my MyTrack, so you'll probably have to put your password in there, but it brings you to this exact page right here. Uh, what you want to do is, there's a setup guide here that will be covered in another video. This will show you all the things that you need to do. Uh, and then you wanna make sure that you have, you know, any data fields, uh, pre-reg limit should be set, deadlines, all that good stuff. Um, and then once you're ready on this basic info page, you want to do your deposit method, another video and step for that. Um, fill out all the information you want people to see. Make sure it's ready to go before you do this. But you'll notice there's this sentence right here that says it's inactive. You're going to click here um, if you'd like to attempt to activate it. And it says attempt to activate it only because the system's going to check to make sure it's ready. So if I go and try this, I click here. I'm going to agree to the chargeback policy, which you can see and read here as well. I'm going to type I agree. And you'll notice that there's the group that doesn't have any weight class in it. So um, th there's a message here because this is a really common, and this is the reason I picked this example. If you're doing Madison block bracketing, you must include either an NA or an all division um, or a weight class in that, which of course you'll delete out later. So the message tells me I can't open it up because something's wrong. If I go to divisions, and I go to this test division, you'll notice there's no weight classes added. So that's pretty simple to do. All I need to do is add a weight class. I'll call it an all weight class. And let's just say that in, for this example, we are block bracketing. We're not putting them in weight classes. So I just want them all in one, I guess, kind of a bucket there. And then now if I go back to basic info, click to attempt to activate it, still agree to the charge back. And now it's going to tell you that it's been successfully activated and what that will look like. You can still make changes here, of course, um, and you likely will and you'll monitor from here. Uh, but if I come back here now and I click pre-register and now you'll see if I'm an athlete coming to register um, that as soon as this page loads up, and that runs a little bit slowly while I'm making uh, the videos, but as soon as that page loads up, now they'll be able to you know, log in with their MyTrack, they'll be able to start a new registration and go through the process.